Hey guys, how's it going? My name is RG Runner. Welcome back to Black Rose, the expansion. Uh, unfortunately, my game didn't save the last time, so I had to play back through all that horror. Ugh. Yeah, it still made me very, very uneasy. And uh, not, not a great start. Either way, let's get back into it. Not sure what to do here. I don't think this number pad does anything as of yet. Anyway, last time we saw a ghostly doctor pass down this way. I sure hope to god we don't have to go back down to this myrtle, that would be just awful. Oh, 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 okay. Whatever. Right, I suppose we just follow follow Dr. Doolittle here, do we? I assume this door is mysteriously going to open now. Yes, it is. Oh my god. Okay, what's going to pop up here? It's going to pop up and do the oogie boogie. Okay, something, something bad is going to happen after this. To make things even weirder, this place has a serious lockdown system. Yesterday was the first time I've ever seen it used, and many of the workers, including myself, were ordered to wait in the family room until the situation was taken care of. No one I've spoken to about it knows why it was done, or at least they won't say. All I know is that these safety glass windows and electronic gates appear to be designed for keeping things in rather than out. I was the first responder that day was the first and only person to make it to Myrtle's side before she passed away. She managed to give Sullivan a parting I love you on that baby monitor, but that was the last communication they ever had. The last thing she ever did was give me that piece of paper. It was a short poem she had written for Sullivan earlier that day. She asked me to give it to him, and I promised her I would. Then she slipped away. I guess Sullivan had picked up by Myrtle's weak rasping in the baby monitor that something was happening to her, because soon after she had passed, he came running into the hall from the upstairs arrangement room. But he was too late. She was gone. That's when he broke down. I'd never seen him show so much emotion towards Myrtle before. Then, of course, the rest happened. I'll keep my promise, even now. That's all I can do for my dear friends. Oh. <clears throat> all, all right then. But that doesn't explain why Myrtle is such a douche. I mean, why does she have to be all creepy and all that? All right. Okay. Whatever. Oh, another note. There are a lot of strange things I've seen around this place. For instance, the fireplace that isn't even a real fireplace. It's some kind of ladder shaft, but there's a tough metal grate fastened over it that appears to be controlled electronically, most likely by the lockdown system. I'm assuming the shaft leads down to the basement, but it must have been sealed off because it's not accessible from anywhere down there. Another thing I've started wondering about is a metal handle that's been sitting on Michael's desk for about a month now. I asked about it once out of curiosity, but he avoided giving me a direct answer. He told me it broke off of something. I had already assumed this, seeing as it's covered in dirt and rusted around the edges where it had clearly been attached to something for a very long time. Perhaps the biggest mystery I've encountered here is the place Myrtle always went for privacy. She was often depressed, so she was always going into the downstairs hall on her way to wherever it was she went to be alone. However, she seemed to vanish. The only place she could have gone from that hallway is down into the basement, but I went down there one day to ask her something and I couldn't find her. I'm wondering if there's a secret room somewhere down there. After all, I did learn from Michael that this building is from the 1600s, long before it was ever a funeral home. Buildings as old as this one sometimes have quite a few secret areas. No, no, I do. I don't want to visit Myrtle again. 
that bitch is crazy. <laughs> yep. She's crazy. Alright, she, and she's out to get me. They still haven't buried them. Sullivan has been lying in his coffin now for two days and Myrtle for three. Because Conrad refused to touch Myrtle's coffin after her funeral, it had to be put aside so Sullivan could have his. Conrad still simply doesn't want to have anything to do with the burial of either of them, even if all he's doing is preparing a future grave without actually touching the coffins. I'm starting to wonder if he had some type of unpleasant encounter with Myrtle and Sullivan's coffins, or if he heard some absurd rumor about their corpses. What's sad is that Myrtle and Sullivan don't have relatives who care enough about their burials to actually do something about this. Michael was embarrassed to have to tell all the relatives and friends that the actual burials couldn't be held yet. Even so, none of them objected. Maybe they just didn't see a point in doing so, considering the person they would be doing it for is already gone. I don't know. As far as feeling nervous around the coffins, I do get a strange vibe now in the visitation room. The atmosphere in there is starting to feel different. The air feels heavier, a little bit oppressive even. It seems to be more noticeable today than it was yesterday. I'm not quite sure if I believe in ghosts or not, but it seems to fit what I've heard before about locations having uncomfortable negative energy due to evil or extremely upset spirits. Maybe it's just normal stuffy air. There aren't any windows in there, and it is the middle of summer. Alrighty then. I... Yeah, that doesn't really explain a lot. So, please tell me if we can just skip the base basement and go into the visitation room. The door is more pretty belly. I don't think I'd be able to open it. Oh. <sighs> Okay, I think we're going downstairs. I think we're going downstairs again, so I'm just gonna leave this door open to make a quick escape. Oh boy. I don't know how I feel about going down here. Check on Myrtle to see if she's in her coffin. Cylinder, babe. Okay, yeah, look that way. Oh boy. I don't like this at all. I really don't like this. Okay, that's that. I'm done. Done the basement. I checked everywhere. We don't have to go down to the basement after all. Um, maybe I can check down here for something. No. Just nothing up here. <laughs> Fucking hell. Station room. Okay. That scared me for a second. Um, is this door open now? Maybe? No. There's a security guard reader here. Looks like it's also part of the passcode. Yeah. Hmm. Passcode, passcode, passcode. Where would a passcode be? Check up here again. Maybe I missed something in this room. No. Fuck. Can I didn't mean to do that? Um. down here it 
Turns out that Devin got into the morgue by stealing Sullivan's key card from the office. Mrs. Rains had been in there and forgot to lock it when she left. Nobody knows exactly how the kid figured out the passcode, but considering what a flake his mother is, that's probably just something else she inadvertently compromised. They're burying Sullivan with a few of his belongings from the funeral home. I guess because he had worked here for so long and was so loyal to his job. Michael revealed that one of those belongings is Sullivan's keycard. Of course, they would need to deactivate it from the system to avoid any breaches in the chance that it was stolen. But then again, Mrs. Rains would be the one who would do that. I discovered earlier today that Devin had stolen the system lock override key as well and hidden it somewhere in the building. This has got to be the most troublesome, ill-behaved kid I have ever encountered. Right, we're going back in here again, are we? Oh. Sullivan and Myrtle as children. Wow, they're kind of creepy. Grease-stricken man killed by train after blinding himself. 57-year-old Sullivan James, one of two funeral directors of the... Chain Meyer Hills Funeral Home was killed Monday after he tripped and fell onto the tracks of an oncoming train. According to his co-workers at the funeral home, James had slipped into a state of grief-stricken hysteria just minutes earlier after experiencing an emotional breakdown over the death of a childhood friend and co-worker, Myrtle Van Wert, who had been suffering from a severe brain tumour which doctors had deemed inoperable. Miss Van Wert passed away nine days after the end of her predicted death. Death date. James, devastated, apparently gouged out his own eyes using a scalpel from the funeral home's preparation room and managed to scramble out a nearby window. <coughs> Excuse me. Miles Treadman, an embalmer at Chainmire. Am I that right yet? Chainmire Hill Funeral Home and a short time co worker of Mr. James had begun to chase after the frenzied man. Oh, oh god, excuse me. Had began to chase after the frenzied man through the field behind the building but was not able to catch him before he reached a nearby segment of railroad tracks and tripped, falling down the top of them. Sorry, falling down on top of them. Treadman and a few others and a few other eyewitness report eyewitnesses reported that James made no attempt to get up as the train quickly rolled in. Grace stricken Sullivan James was killed on impact, the fast moving train hitting him with such force that he was severed into three pieces. It has been speculated by those who knew the man that had his fatal episode was driven by guilt for not being for not treating his longtime friend how how he be how he believed he should have. This double tragedy at the Chainmire Funeral Home has sparked a great debate, or <laughs> has sparked a great deal of public interest in the site, and has become an attraction for loitering and vandalism amongst young people. In the three days that have passed since the incident, three arrests have been made. They never buried either of them, both are still here. There's something written on the back. They say that if you can take his rose, he wakes up. That's the only way his coffin will open. I heard that he also tears you into three pieces if he catches you. You? Something you to do? Oh my god. <laughs> they won't find it, ever. There's a key here labeled V. Oh. Boy, this is just gone but way creepy. All those attending the funeral service for Sullivan James, please gather in the visitation room. Oh, uh, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's that about? Okay, um. Yes, we're going into the visitation room. Oh boy. 
Oh god, this is just creepy. This is so, so beyond creepy. Dare you, dare you, double dare you. You know, I, I'd, I'd much rather not. I'd rather not take that rose. But I suppose I have to, don't I? It's a black origami rose lying on top of the coffin. Take it? No. Nope. No, 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 no. Actually, I'm just going to explore the roof a small bit. Mm hmm. Okay, looks like it tightened. Oh, yeah, that must have been just my whole movement. Okay, can't put this off any longer. I have to take the rose. I'm sorry, James. Sorry. Sorry, buddy. Oh, God. I'm outie. Ah! I'm sorry. Okay. Sullivan James was blind as a bat. Sullivan James fell down flat. Sullivan James is withered and blue. Sullivan James is coming for you. No, that's bullshit. He's not. Uh oh. Maybe he is. I'm, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh god. Oh, Jesus Christ. What well, game over that is bullshit. Continue, I suppose I will. I didn't think I could move now. Uh, I'm all the way back here. Hey, Sully baby, what's happening? Sullivan James was blind as a bat. Sullivan James fell down flat. Oh, come on, that, that's not even nice. Sullivan James is withered and blue. Yeah, I'm, I'm prepared for this. I'm fucking running my Sullivan ass James out of here. Is coming for you. Sure. I hope that's your idea of a crazy joke. Oh, oh god. Oh god. He's coming after me. He's coming after me. He's coming after me. Got the key, got the key, got the key, got the key. Oh god. Oh god. Does this stop? Does this stop? This got, this got to stop. Get me off this ride! I want to go home. Oh god! Yeah, he's coming for me. He's still coming for me. Oh my god! Oh god! Open up that door. I'm, I'm assuming that it'll, it'll work now, will it? I'm dead. Shit. Sullivan James is withered and blue. Sullivan James is coming for you. All right, here we go again. Oh, scary shit's going down. I'm gonna try and work this shit out now, though. Uh oh. Hey, it's only. Uh oh. Sully, you're being irrational. Stop it. Sully, this isn't necessary. Oh my god. Okay. 
Right, where do I go? Where on earth do I go? Um, oh shit! No, 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 the only other place I, I can think of is the basement. No? Or maybe he stops after a while, I'm not sure. Something just fell where Selvin was. Do you know where Selvin was? Oh. Oh, the key card. Okay, fine. Yes, that's it. Okay, we're making progress. This might be a longer video than I expected. Right. Okay, if there's a, a another checkpoint, I'll I'll save it. Wait. Enter. Passcode. Is this tonight? Hmm. Right click to go. Right click to go back. Count the lines, but count the lines beneath the lines. Uh huh. Hope Solomon James doesn't show up. While I'm trying to figure this out. Not the lines between the lines. I was never really much good at puzzles. Hmm. Count the lines between the lines. What kind of crap is that? Um. Hmm. What? Just gonna check this again. Zero to nine. Zero. Uh, what? This doesn't, this doesn't make any sense to me. And yeah, I'm familiar with the game X's and O's or tic tac toe, whatever you want to call it, whatever part of the globe you're in. But this is just got me like crazy Jesus um hold on two I'm guessing two zero Unless he means the free lines or something. So there's two vertical free lines. So. And, and two horizontal. Unless that's what he means. To, so it'll be four, zero, three, zero, try four, zero, three, zero. Four zero three zero. No, that wasn't it. Definitely not. I'll try. I've got one, one more thing. If I, if I can't, if it doesn't work, I'll just give up. Three one four two. Access denied. Okay, fine. So for the time being, I give up. 
and that means getting chased by Sullivan James again the next time I come back and having to replay through it. Oh boy, but I cannot figure this out. I'm going to figure it out in my own time and then get back to it. Wait, what? What? What, what happened there? I don't know, the pause menu broke for some, some reason. Oh, Christ, okay. I thought my computer froze. Either way, guys, you know what to do. If you liked this video, be sure to like, favorite, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. So until next time, see ya.